With rasterization and even basic recursive ray tracing, we're still unable to achieve the effect of light bouncing around the scene and causing indirect lighting and color bleeding. While ray tracing on its own offers the simulation of shadows, reflection, and refraction, we still only calculate diffuse and specular shading with a single bounce of light. What we want is a simulation of multiple diffuse and specular light bounces, so light from multiple areas in the scene can contribute to the final shading calculated for a surface point. The effect we're interested in here is called global illumination. In 1986, James Kajia introduced the rendering equation, which is just a way of summing together all reflected and emitted light for a given surface point. Now we've seen parts of the rendering equation before when we discussed the use of BSDFs, so part of this should look quite familiar. The rendering equation tells us how light should be reflected from some point X in the scene in a particular outgoing direction, and we'll call that omega sub O, or we can think of this as the direction towards the camera. The integration here allows us to consider lighting coming in from all possible directions, which we'll refer to using omega sub i for the incoming light. To calculate outgoing light, we consider the following terms. We have the light actually emitted from the surface, only if uh, the surface is a light source of some sort. We have incoming light intensity for a particular incoming angle. The BSDF, which, as we've already seen in a previous lecture, just modifies the incoming light in accordance with the material properties. And then finally, we just have the geometric term, or the cosine factor, which, as we've seen before, is used to just scale the light intensity of the incoming light based on the angle made with the surface normal. This equation is used recursively to determine the outgoing light from each relevant surface point we're trying to render. So when we cast our first ray out into the scene, well, we'll encounter a surface point where we need to know the outgoing light in order to color a pixel. So we integrate over the incoming light vectors for that surface point, recursively applying the rendering equation to determine outgoing light from those points, and so on until we converge on a satisfactory solution. Before we move on to the currently most commonly used global illumination method, let's talk about some alternatives. First up we have photon mapping, where actually two sets of rays are traced in the scene. We have, of course, our camera rays, which are backwards traced through the scene, as well as uh, what we can think of as photons, or uh, rays traced uh, forwards through the scene from light sources, and, uh, well, these photon rays are terminated using either energy attenuation at every bounce, which basically terminates a, a ray when its energy is low enough, uh, or by uh, using a probability of continuation at each bounce, uh, with that probability decreasing uh, at each bounce. The two sets of rays are then associated with each other to produce radiance values for each rendered surface point. Then we can use the rendering equation to calculate the following four effects for these surface points. We can figure out direct illumination, specular reflection, indirect illumination, as well as caustics, which are the bright spots caused by uh, transparent materials like glass uh, focusing light. Another global illumination method used in the past is radiosity where a scene is broken down into patches. Something called a view factor is computed for each pair of patches, which is basically just how well they can see each other. These relationships between patches allow illumination for a certain patch to be calculated not just from direct illumination, but from indirect lighting as well. This is great for calculating global illumination for softly lit scenes, uh, but one thing to note about radiosity is that it does not simulate specularity, uh, only indirect diffuse lighting. These are just two alternatives for global illumination, but there are many others out there as well. So now we'll move on to path tracing, which is a fantastic uh, modern choice for global illumination. 
Now, it's worth repeating here for clarity that traditional ray tracing, as we've seen in a previous lecture, only traces specific types of rays, uh, most notably shadow rays, reflection rays, and refraction rays. Diffuse and specular lighting is calculated using direct illumination, and therefore a modification has to be made to the ray tracing algorithm in order to achieve global illumination. This is where path tracing comes in. Now with path tracing, only one path or sequence of recursive rays are traced at a time. For each pixel of the final image, we sample the pixel at different locations over its surface area. And because for many surface types, we don't know exactly how a ray is going to reflect, we simply follow its path until the ray is terminated. Once a sufficient number of paths have been traced, the color contribution from each path is summed up to determine the final color of the pixel. Now for context, production quality rendering may use somewhere around maybe 3000 samples per pixel to get sufficient render quality. We've seen that the effects achieved by traditional ray tracing are quite limited. Path tracing, on the other hand, allows more physical phenomenon to be achieved without the need for additional simulations, such as soft shadows. And these are things like soft shadows, caustics, anti-aliasing, and of course, the all-important global illumination. These are all achieved for free, if you will, just because of how the algorithm works and don't require any additional simulations to achieve the effects. It should be clear here that path tracing demands a lot of computation resources. Just think about the number of rays that have to be cast per pixel, and all the additional ray bounces throughout the scene. One specific issue involves the fact that if the light sources in the scene are very small, it'll take a really long time to backwards trace light rays to that light source simply because there's such a small chance of actually hitting it eventually. Let's examine some optimizations for path tracing. So first we have important sampling, where we examine the effect of the BSDF used for particular surfaces, and when we bounce uh, additional rays off of them, we only bounce those rays in important directions based on how the BSDF reflects light. Next, we have multiple important sampling, where instead of bouncing rays randomly off surfaces, we bounce more rays towards the light source, as those rays are quite important and contribute a lot of information to the final appearance of the surface point. Next, we have bidirectional path tracing, where we're actually combining forwards and backwards ray tracing, uh, tracing rays both from the camera and from the light source, and connecting the paths after a number of bounces. This results in far greater efficiency in the use of computational resources, with all our effort put towards computing light paths which actually reach the light source. And finally, an additional optimization to bidirectional path tracing is called Metropolis Light Transport. With this method, uh, once a bright light path is established from camera to light, that's a light path that actually connects and really contributes some useful information to the scene, nearby light paths are then explored, instead of randomly bouncing light rays around the scene, uh, most of which could be useless. 